So, wizard. The uh, wizard. Scott and I met two awesome, smart people at the previous PAX Australia. The first PAX Australia. Yes. We went to it. We were walking around, and we were like, we got to find some smart people to play a game with. Mm -hmm. We saw two people, and they were looking for a game. So, like, hey, you want to play a game? And one thing led to another. We played Hanavi. We played Hanavi, and which is smart person detector alpha. Yep. And they were smart. Yep. The smart person detector went ding, ding, ding. Yep. It's almost like a dowsing rod, but it works. So I have to give props to them because Jess and Bain, these mm -hmm. two people who were smart and we hung out with them, I hung out with them again at the next PAX Oz because like we do, we form PAX-specific posses in every region of the world where there's a PAX. Mm -hmm. And they brought out a game. And as is the Rim and Scott style, I did what we always do. Really? I don't, I've never heard of this game and you want me to play it? Watch how enthused I am. <laughs> Watch me try to avoid learning this game because I actually just want to play this game that I brought. Mm -hmm. And I played Wizard. <laughs> and it was great. <laughs> Wizard. So <laughs> Wizard is actually a mad old game. It's published in 1984. It is two years younger than us. Yep. It was... Uh, it, all, it all received a nomination for the 2011 Netherlands Spellenpreis, which I guess is the Netherlands game prize. Netherlander das Spiel des Jahres. Right, basically, in 2011. So it took that long for the game to be recognized. It wasn't even published commercially until like 1986. Right. Uh, and then we only discovered it in 2014. Yeah. So and of course, th this game is like a game that I guess has just been sitting in the dark and suddenly popped out of nowhere. It's designed by a guy named Ken Fisher, yeah. who I never heard of, but I'm going to look him up. All right, in his Board Game Geek picture, he has a hood on that has a gold lining. <laughs> I think Wizard is the only thing that he makes. It's, it's wizardcards.com. Well, you know what, official guy? Official website. If you've only ever made one game, you're batting a 1,000. Oh, no. Uh, he's made... Isaac Asimov Super Quiz 1, 2, and 3. Okay, I think your batting average is dropping. Or maybe this is just his part of his wish. I don't know. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, we'll do less. Wizard's, on Wizard's the only thing we care about. Sorry, so, Ken Fisher. Wizard is interesting because... He actually has the username Wizard on BoardGameGeek. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, remember our review of Pendante. Mm -hmm. Pendante is like the... If poker were designed today to be fun... Yeah, it's Pendante. It's like they take poker and you soup it up with some, you know, Euro game, you know, skills and some modern design. And write rules to it like it's a modern game and, and all that. And put some theme on there. Yeah. And you know what? Pendante gives you 90% of the fun of actual poker without any of the tedium of actual poker. Right. So Wizard is, well, <laughs> Pendante is to poker as Wizard is to Wist. Yes. Slash heart, slash or, euchre, slash yes. every trick taking. Trick taking games. Right. Wizard now, is just a Trump boot suit following trick taking game. Now, most people who are in the board game nerd community who are looking to play a trick taking game go straight to Teach You. I have Teach You. I played Teach You. Teach You is not good. Teach You is not good. I fun. would rather play Hearts than play Teach You, but I would rather play Wizard than any other trick taking game I've ever seen. Well, it depends. And bridge, bridges for old people. I. I, I so. I grew up in the Midwest mm -hmm. where everyone plays trick-taking games. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Everyone knows those kinds of games. You grow up playing Euchre and Whist and Hearts and Pinochle and all these kinds of games. Uh, I hate Bridge. I hate Pinochle. I like Euchre, but if you play Euchre enough, it's a solved game that comes down to cheating. Mm -hmm. uh, Hearts is a fantastic game. Hearts is the best. I fucking love Hearts. I will play Hearts almost any time. Hearts is great. Yes. But... Much like how we, when we taught Pendante, especially when I tried to teach Pendante to a bunch of our friends, I learned that a lot of our friends had never played poker. Yep. Like, they didn't know what a flush was. So they knew what they a floosh was. They were extra surprised by a floosh. Yep. And this was the same deal. It was interesting to read the rules to trick-taking, because I had never in my life thought about the rules to trick-taking. Yeah, if I had to teach Rim this game, I would say, look... We all you have to do in this game is trick taking. It's trick taking game. There's Trump. Trump is the top card that gets revealed from the deck after we deal the cards. Well, here you know what? What I'll do right now for you guys, I'm going to teach you the entire game the way I would teach it to Scott. All right. So, but I already know how to play. Exactly. But this is for the <laughs> listener. <laughs> so this is basically just a trick taking game. But the way you're going to do it is you bid how many tricks you're going to take, and then you play a hand of one. 
Then you bid how many tricks you're going to take, and you play a hand of two, then a hand of three. So obviously, in four. the hand of one, I would only bid one or zero. Yes. Because it would be impossible for me to take two tricks. Yep. Dealer deals. <laughs> Am I allowed to bid two, even though there's only one nope, trick to you, take? Well, yes, but that's going to fuck you, because uh, the scoring is you get one point for every trick you take if you bid the correct number. Mm -hmm. And then you get two points because you bid correctly. So if I bid one, I get one, I get three points. So you want to take more tricks and bid correctly, but if... Bidding correctly is more important because if you're even one off from the correct bid, you lose a point lose a for every one you're off by. So if I bid eight and I take nine or seven, I lose a point. But if I bid one and take one and you bid five and take five, you're doing way better than me. Exactly. That way you can't just be like zero, zero, always taking zero, ducking under. Even if you always take zero... You're going to play a trump card at some point because you're going to have one in your hand and you're going to take one. Maybe, maybe not. And then you you're going to be off. Yeah, because someone else will play the fucking ace and you just duck your trump under that. It's fine. <laughs> no. So that's the game with one trick to it. Th oh, three tricks. Three tricks? Yeah. I was just going to say there are super trump weird cards. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's only four of each type. There are jesters and there are... Wizards. I didn't. I don't know any jesters. So the problem is the game is in German, at least the copy of it that we got. So it's Zauberers and Nars, Zs and Ns, because that's not in any way visually confusing. Yeah, because a Z is just a sideways N. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, six and nine upside down. So anyway, so that's why you draw a line on one side of it, so you know. A wizard. Is it, it is Trump and it is infinity. Mm. So it always wins the trick. If what if two people play wizards at the same time? If multiple wizards are played, whichever wizard was played first wins the trick. So if I get the first play because I took the last trick and I play a wizard, I get the next trick and everyone else can dump a card? Yes. Yeah, so if, I, if you lead a wizard and clear out a suit or whatever, there is no suit for that hand. So wouldn't I want to play my wizards later in the round? Because I mean, I'm going to take a trick with a wizard anyway. Possibly. So if I play it later in the round, I'm basically preventing people from dumping suit early in the but round. But you don't want to be in a situation where you don't have the lead anymore, so, and then the last three people all lead wizard, and then your fourth wizard is just fucked. Uh, that could happen. Or you might accidentally take a trick in the mid, and now you don't want to take a trick with that wizard. Uh, and then the jesters. They are negative infinity and are not Trump. No. Nah. They have what if, no suits. So obviously, even if two people play Nar, one of the other players is going to take the trick. But what if all players play Nar? Whoever led that Nar gets fucked. Oh, no. I've, I've never seen it happen. I doubt that would ever the happen. The day it happens, I'm going to yell and scream because it's going to be Nar. so beautiful. Well, so it says here on Board Game you can play with three to six players, but there's only four Nars. So it can only happen it with three or four players. It can only happen with four or fewer players. I it, think the game is best with four players, like all trick-taking games are. Yeah, if you play with five or six, I mean, obviously the, the really all-wizard or all-Nar situation can't happen. Yes. But. So if a Nar is led, then the next player to play sets the suit for the trick. Ah, okay. So, that's pretty much the whole game. Mm. Now, if you don't know, if that doesn't mean anything to you, the way trick-taking games work, fundamentally, one, you should go back and listen to our episode right. on hearts. Yeah, everyone who is in the game has a hand of cards. Yes. Someone goes first. That person plays a card, any of the cards. Cards have a suit and a value. So, whatever suit was played is now the suit for that hand, right. that trick. So, the next person now has to play one card from their hand. If they have a card matching the suit of the already played card, they must follow suit. That's why, you ever heard the phrase follow suit? Yep. That's what that means. So, if Rim goes first and he plays a spade... The car and I have a spade in my hand. I must play a spade. I may not play one of the other cards in my hand. And people, if I cheat, people can figure it out easily and ruin me. Yep. Pointing out. So I had to play a spade. If I don't have a spade, I may play any of the other cards in my hand. Exactly. So one suit will be determined by some fashion. In some games, players can kind of decide through a process. In this game and in many games, it's just random. Mm -hmm. And not all trick-taking games have this, mm -hmm. but one suit will be determined to be Trump. Mm -hmm. That suit will trump any other suits. So if I played the 10 and Scott played the 4 and someone else played the 2 of the suit that was the trick then I would get it. I have the highest number. Yep. But and if, if anyone, and someone else plays a card from some other suit because they didn't have the appropriate suit in hand... It's worth nothing. They don't, they don't get to take the trick because it's only you have to follow suit 
for your card to count as taking the trick. But a two of Trump beats the highest number of non-Trump. Right. So it's like if I want to take tricks, a lot of them, I want to have a lot of Trump cards in my hand and dump a suit. So let's say I get rid of all the spades in my hand, but I have a bunch of Trump cards. Hearts are Trump. Then other people still have a ton of spades and they play them. And on my turn, I don't have to play a spade because I don't have one. So I play my heart cards that are Trump. And I get to take those tricks, regardless of the value of my heart cards. Unless as long else. as someone else also ran out of spades and plays heart cards that are higher value than mine, right? So because the hearts are the trump. If someone just starts the hand with the, the hearts, well, that's awesome sometimes. That, but yeah. you have to follow suit. You had to follow suit. So if so, in it like a stand, like in hearts. Well, the hearts is an example. So in euchre, if I play euchre's not a good example because then I have to explain fucking bow or whatever. Yes. So. In whist, if I play the ace of of Trump and I lead that, and Scott only has a king of the Trump suit, he's got to just throw it down and lose it. And it doesn't do anything, even yeah. though that is an extremely powerful card. Yeah. I was forced to play it and lose it. So the final rub in Wizard is that you may play a Nar or a Zauberer regardless of following suit at any time. You can always play one. Yep, so even if I can follow suit, I can wizard or gnar instead. So, like, if I want to really... If I am gonna, no, if I was in a situation like Rim just said where I have a really powerful card, but I'm going to be forced to lose it, I can just gnar or wizard instead and keep that powerful card in my hand and then play it later and get the value from it. Yep. So, the game is great. You can play it with a normal deck of cards as long as you have eight cards beyond the deck of cards that can be labeled Zar and, and uh, Zar, Zarberer and Nar. So usually if you buy a deck of playing cards at the drugstore, it's going to have like two learn to play cards and two jokers. You might need to like get two decks of cards with the same back and like take the aces and doodle on them and write Zabaer and then take some deuces and write Nar on them or something. Yeah, do something like that. Or you can just buy, there's a lot of people that make pre-made decks. The one we bought has the... The official one has the best worst art yeah, ever. So the artist is Franz Vowinkel, and the art is simultaneously good and bad. I mean, it's not the worst art I've seen. It's not Sentinels of the Multiverse, the art is which special. looks like a child drew it. Sorry, whoever did that, but yeah, it's bad. Uh, the art's special, and if you play with this deck, your players will comment on the art. Yeah, it's noteworthy, which I think is actually a positive, right? It doesn't really matter for the game, you know, a lot. This is the way it does for like a collectible or you know living. Oh game. my god! I just realized what it says on the back. Game contents: sixty character cards, one score pad of truth, mm -hmm. one set of instructions. I love how it's not even branded as a card game. It's a the character cards. Yep. It has this whole story, and and the story in the game is amazingly succinct. What's not, the story? The story is we unearthed Stonehenge and found. The game that Wizards used to play back when Wizards existed. Nice. Here are the rules. Dude, <laughs> that sounds true to me. I believe it. So, if you have never played a trick-taking game ever, get this game and play it. It says on Board Game Geek that Wizard originated from Oh Hell, or also known as Up and Down the River, which are played with a standard deck of 52 cards, with a proprietary 60-card deck, comprising a standard deck plus four wizards and four jesters in the first hand, one card, and so on and so on. So apparently there was another trick-taking game called Oh Hell, also known as Up and Down the River, which was the game that came before Wizard, but did not have the Wizards and Nars in it. Yep. But then you're getting close to Whist or Gops or all those other kinds of games. Yep. But uh, seriously, if you've never played a trick-taking game, get Wizard somehow. And this is the best way to learn trick-taking games, to learn to get good at them. And then, like, it'll be really easy to play Hearts and Euchre and all these other kinds of I games. I think you should just play Hearts first on your uh, Windows PC. Well, well, so it's tricky because... Or Yahoo games. What's interesting is and that... And then you'll be able to play Wizard Hearts very easily. Has the Hearts teaches you desuiting and ducking and all those kinds of strategies. Very important things to know for Wizard. But Hearts has no trump, and Hearts has the card passing Well, mechanics. Hearts are trump in Hearts. Well, they're not trump. Uh, sort of. Right. No, they're, they're, they're like not Trump. They're like reverse Trump. Like you no, they're not. 
They are. No, they're not. They don't. They don't count extra for taking a suit. A no, trick. but they're the in Trump only means it lets you take a trick that you wouldn't otherwise take. Doesn't sure, mean anything. But else. they're the special suit in that you don't. Yes, wa- Trump doesn't trying mean to not... the special suit. They're the point <laughs> suit. Don't fuck with me on trick taking games. Where? I grew up in Michigan. You're just you're being a pedantic nonsense. If you called that Trump among anyone <laughs> who plays these games, they would laugh you out of the room. You'll still be able to easily understand the concepts of Wizard after playing Hearts. Scott, other th- uh, in America, other than one teaching game, I'm fucking undefeated at Wizard. So don't you even, don't you even. <laughs> so, but yeah, Hearts and Euchre are the two like Arctic typical games. I'd say Wist, but no one fucking actually plays Wist. Well, people did. No, yeah, no one modern <laughs> plays Wist. And also, Euchre is basically just like Wist with a, sh- a tiny deck. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, li- it's almost like. Euchre is almost to whist what Pendante is to poker as well, in a mm-hmm. sense. Well, it's also like, bridge. Yeah, I hate bridge. Mm-hmm. But to bridge. articulate why requires... Bridge is a big deal, though. I know it is. <laughs> I respect bridge, but I don't like playing bridge. <laughs> but, so, let's talk about wizard, because just play it, but strategy-wise... Oh, strategy-wise, all this right. This is a good game with a very high skill cap. Right, so I think my the thing is... you Playing go, this with people, with noobs... Is like beating babies to death. Like it's just right. So you look at your open, you look at your hand, and you say, "How many tricks can I possibly take with this hand?" And the thing is, well, you could. You might have a hand. It's got like wizard. Okay, I got to bet at least one. I got a wizard. Yep. Then I got like two high trump cards. Well, I should probably bet. Scott, I saw a game in the first round. Two wizards were in people's hands. Yep. So shit happens. Exactly. So. Let's say it's the hand of uh, five. You've got uh, a wizard, two high trumps, and two mech cards. Are those mech cards the same suit? Mm, Maybe. Yeah, why not? If they're the same suit, I'm definitely bidding fucking four. How are you going to get four? Uh, Because I'm going to control with the wizard, lead my other stuff. The odds of other trump being out in the five hand, probably pretty low. So you think you're basically counting that one of those mech cards will be able to take a trick. Because I'll be leading it toward the end. Mm. And because they're meh, if I, if someone else fucks me somehow and takes control, I'll probably be able to use those trump to get control back pretty easily mm. because the odds of the highest trump being in the game are pretty low. And two, because I'm desuited, there's a decent chance I can use one of those trump to get back in right away. Yeah, I would just bet three because even if I am able to take uh, one of the tricks with one of those meh cards, right... I um, know that other people all have five cards in the hand. Someone's going to fuck me when I play one of my high trumps with a wizard or some shit. Yeah. So I basically can't, those two, those, you know, the advantage I can do if I try to take the tricks versus the someone's going to fuck me cancel out. So I go, well, for, I, go here's the, I go three. Here's the real thing. My heuristic there, which was similar to yours, is just based on your hand, which is how, like in hearts, your hand is the only real core directional. You, you don't get to got. see anyone else's hand. That's all you got to go And there's on. no bidding, but in wizard... Players openly bid on how many tricks they're going to take in turn order. Yeah, so depending on who bids first and what they've bid, it's the hand of five. The first player, let's say Rim goes, he has the hand we just discussed. If I'm bidding first, he I bids, would bid three. All right, so he going first, he bids three. If he's correct, that means among the th- three other players, only two people should take tricks. Meanwhile, I'm sitting to the left of Rim. I look at my hand. It's ridiculous luck day. I have two wizards. So... But all the other cards in my hand are like twos. But you know that I'm really confident because I bid three not knowing anyone else's bid. Right, So, but I'm bidding two. I got two wizards. All right, so the other two people either know they're not taking shit are dumb and bid Right, anyway. so now it's a round of five, and five people have already bid. Well, two, two people have bid on all five tricks. The other guy's holding like a really high trump card. He bids one. And the other person's got some high trump cards, too. They bid one or two. Now, this is where the game gets interesting. So now, or the does people the g- have bid a total of, like, seven or eight you tricks know, out of only five available tricks. Yep. Someone's wrong. And and funny, sometimes it'll go way under. Like, I saw a, game, a couple of games where, like, in one hand, the bids will be, like, one, one, zero. And then the fourth person's like, uh, seven? Yeah, they got a really <laughs> bad hand, but everyone else bid way low. And the other thing is sometimes you'll underbid, right? Uh, by accident? Well, that was yeah. So in your example, the guy with that high trump, maybe he gets scared away from bidding because he knows, like, all right, these guys got fucking wizards or whatever. Right. So he bids zero. So now my shit hand is more likely to win because he's doing everything he can to not take any right. tricks. So let's say I'm in a situation where I got like I got a high card of every suit and a wizard. So I've got I think I'm gonna take five tricks. 
But I'm pretty sure one of these is going to get fucked over. It's a 10 and not a 13 in green or something. So I'm like, yeah, someone's going to probably pick an 11 or 12 green, and I won't get that one. So I'll go under by one. I'll bid four. Then as we play, all the, I'm forced to play those high suit cards by following suit, and I end up taking my four tricks, and I still have my wizard in my hand. So <laughs> the other thing is when the bidding ends, usually you'll see like a lot, like among people who are, like really smart and good at trick taking games, the bids are almost always within one or two of the actual number of yep. tricks that are. I've available. never been off by more than one. Yeah, I've been. I was off by two or three or four or five in toward the end. Because if you're behind, fucking just bid extra. Yeah, if you're gonna lose, right, then your only hope to catch up is to try to take more tricks. That's another thing. Is like. I'll play a hand and I'll bid three and I will take exactly three and say, what a good job that was. I got it exactly right, but I didn't get it exactly right. I could have taken four or five tricks. I just didn't bet four or five. So I chose during the round to not take tricks I could have taken because I bid too low. So I, even though I got the right number and got the you know points and didn't lose points, I could have had more points because I made bidding was not aggressive enough. So basically the game has the bidding aspects of bridge it has the Trump protection aspects of Euchre, and it has the ducking and desuiting tactics of Hearts. Mm -hmm. So it combines a lot of my favorite card it games. Got, it's pretty much everything there is about trick-taking games all in one game. So it comes with a bunch of variants in the Plus rules. Wizards! Yeah, but whatever. Wizards! There is one problem with the game as written. Mm. The game does not give you a way to deal with Renege. Mm. So in, like, in Euchre... If you fuck up and for, like you don't follow suit, and then later it's like, oops, I had a heart and I should have played it, that doesn't ruin the game. The rules basically, like, the rules deal with that. There's a rule for if someone reneges. Right. So let's say reneg, Rick, or if you're in the, mid in the Midwest, renege because they just can't pronounce words. Right. So let's say Rim uh, has a green card in his hand, and I play green, and he chooses to play some red card. He forgets that he had yep. green in his hand. Then we find out later when he plays a green card, and I say, hey, Rim. Uh, why didn't you follow that green card on the previous two turns ago when I played green? Yep, fuck, we've ruined the game. No way to fix it. There's no fix written into the rules now, I, at all. I want, I'm trying to come up with a rule that we, as like our friend group, is just going to agree upon as the rule for reneges, just so that we don't have to deal with it. Because the, the fact of the I, matter is... I think the rule should be something along the lines of whoever takes that trick should take it according to the cards that were played. Yep. But the per if you are caught... Basically, you lose, just lose chips. Yeah, you just, I, I'm you trying just lose to figure points because like, you screwed up. I'm trying to figure out like a number of them. Right, and... I think the number has to scale up as the as you get deeper in the game. It has to be the penalty should become worse. How about this? You lose a number of chips equal to the number of cards. That might be too much though. But at the same time, it also depends on like how significant was the mistake you made. Exactly, it might not have mattered. Like, oh, you would have played it earlier and not taken the trick, and the other card that you did play earlier would have. Not taking this trick. Exactly. And also, and you fucked up everyone else's card counting. That's all. Counting cards are very important. So, I'm not sure. And if anyone has any suggestions, discuss in the forum. Because that's the only flaw with this game. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that there's a variant I really want to try. Because one thing that Hearts has that makes Hearts shooting amazing. The shooting the moon? No. <laughs> so, in Hearts, in the first hand... Oh, the passing across. You pick three cards and pass them to the dude to your left, and the dude to your right passes three to you. Yep. So I know that I gave this motherfucker three spades. So yep. I know he's got a bunch of high spades, and mm -hmm. I don't have any spades. It's going to be awesome. Now here's, Sorry, so we can dev, you can easily add that to Wizard as a yes. variant rule. No problem. Here's the question, though. Do you bid before or after passing? I think... After by default, do you? But, but do you? But so, hardcore mode is before. <laughs> I mean, we could. You could choose the cards you're going to pass, then bid, then see the cards you're picking up. Because they remember that you're still getting information from the other people's bids. Yep. You could also have something cool where, like, you're allowed. So it's like you get after to, you get your cards, you're allowed to raise your bid, but you can't lower it. Like something like that. Mm. There, there's this game is ripe. For custom the thing house is, rules. with passing cards, people are gonna dump suit like pretty much immediately. Uh, yeah, that's what happens in and hearts. Trump, and you know what happens Trump then? cards become way more powerful. Uh, yeah, that's... and you'll be able to take way more tricks if you have any Trumps whatsoever. And you know what? Much like with Dune, so, do you reveal Trump before or after the the bidding and passing? Much like with the Dune, order matters so much. Eh, even then, Scott. Much like with Dune, 
everybody has that power. That's correct. And two... But then luck becomes a big factor, but too. But two, in high-level hearts play, for example, I would pass my dad two high clubs and a middling to low club. Mm-hmm. But maybe I didn't desuit myself of clubs. Yo, you got a low club. I mean, you're going to get rid of that. No problem. You kept the low one. No, but I gave away a low one to m- imply that I had gotten rid of all my clubs, and I'm probably some other fucker who's going to heart and or queen of spades right. someone. You held one middling club. Yeah. That's, that's still not going to take a trick. Hopefully not. <laughs> so you get into, like... The card in high level hearts play, the cards you pass themselves are a whole game of their own. So it's like there's a whole process of seeing your cards, choosing which cards to pass, seeing the cards that were passed to you, and seeing what Trump is, and seeing the other players' bids. And you know, so like when in that process, the order that you do the things and when the people bid really changes the game a zillion. Yep. So if you're, you know, if you're an aspiring game designer and you think those, none of those things sound like a big deal, they're such different games. If you don't I, understand why the order of those things changes the game like 10,000%, don't make any games. And if you want to be good at this game when you first teach it to your friends, one, play a bunch of hearts online, mm-hmm. but two, uh, a basic heuristic that a, a lot of noobs use is guess how many tricks you think you're going to take and go for one less than that because you're probably wrong. Yep. You'll probably get wizarded or something. It's like yep. count the number of awesome trick-taking cards in your hand that are powerful, the high trumps and the wizards and whatever. Take that number, subtract one, and then try to take that many tricks. And you'll probably beat most people who don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And we're gonna play, I mean, we're gonna play a lot of games at Pack South, but I think Wizard's gonna be the like, it's gonna be the default warm-up game. Or the default, four of us are waiting for you guys to finish Eclipse before we do another thing game. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Also, uh, at least our thing, as came up at PAX Aus, is anytime someone plays a wizard, they basically sing that thing from Daffy Duck, Behold the Wizard, Incredible incredible Power. power. (laughs) That, that... You're pretty much obligated to say that out loud, possibly loudly, every time you play a wizard. Yep. So, so uh, link to that in the much ex- like whatever. the posing in Pendante. This game is Floosh. also right. Floosh. You know it's a good right. Any good board game, any good tabletop game is gonna have a thing that people say. Y'all got right? a brick. Y'all I got... need some wood from my sheep. That's right. So <laughs> the fact that this people are playing this game, going wizard, <laughs> shows a good game. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.